In this video, I'm going to be walking you through a list of very common Angular errors that for sure you want to avoid in your code. Don't fall for this. I'm going to give you the mistake and I'm going to also give you the correct alternative. So without further ado, let's get started with this list of common Angular mistakes. Welcome back to the Angular University channel, I'm Vasco. So just a quick disclaimer, the goal of this mistake list is not to put down or criticize the developers that do or did this in the past. I have done all of these mistakes myself. This comes from my own personal experience in my startup using Angular for the last few years. So the goal of the video is just to summarize the most common mistakes that I've learned all in one place in the hope that you won't fall for this just like I did. All right, and with this out of the way, let's get started with mistake number one, overusing the Angular async pipe. So here is a typical situation. You have a component that has data that is provided via observables. These observables might come from your HTTP backend. They might come for your, from your in-memory NGRX store. They might come from your Firebase Firestore database doesn't matter, you have free observables that are bringing the data from somewhere. And in different places of your component, you're going to need to access this data, the courses, the lessons and the users. So you do something like this in your template. In this particular section of the template, you need all three courses, lessons and users. So you nest here a series of at if or ng if statements and you apply the async pipe everywhere just to be able to use here the courses, the lessons and the users. And then further down the page, in another section of your page, this time around, you just need the courses and the users in a completely different section of the page. So you apply again the same thing. You nest here multiple at ifs just to be able to access your observable data and then further down you just need the lessons and you go ahead and you access the lessons observable again eventually you are going to see this as a problem you're going to see that this is not very readable or maintainable so you might opt for uh, adding uh, global top level at if statements in your whole page. So wrapping the whole content of your page in this type of nested statements just to be able to use observable data. As you can see, this all feels very cumbersome and it kind of feels wrong. It's not that it doesn't work, but all this level of nesting just makes your templates more complicated, harder to maintain. You need uh, uh, tomorrow the users here, for example, in this other section, you're going to add here another at if nested just to be able to access the users here in this section of the page. It's just a mess. It's clearly not how this was intended to be used. So how do we fix this? Well, we're going to be using what I like to call the single data observable pattern. I have here a video linked on top where I discuss this pattern in more detail, but here I'm going to give you the gist of it. Start by defining an interface that contains all the data that your component needs. In this case, the courses, the lessons and the users. This could be an interface that is just going to be used by your component and nothing more. Next up, you're going to go to your component and instead of defining three different observables, courses, lessons and users, you just define one single data observable. So that's what it gives the name to the pattern, this single data observable. It's an observable of page data that we have just defined. And then you go ahead and you define this observable using any RxJS operators that you want. The goal is to create one single unique observable that you're going to subscribe at the top of your component and that is going to give all your component access to all the data that you need. This is very maintainable. If in the future you need more data, all you have to do is to plug it into your page data model. You add here the data that you need and then the data is automatically available in the template. Now, how do you create this data observable? In this case, I am 
using combined latest, it usually uh, involves using some form of uh, combined latest to create this data observable. I'm using combined latest. This is going to take the uh, last value emitted by each of the observables and emit everything together in a tuple. And then I am converting here the tuple into an instance of page data. So a very simple pattern. You do have to set this up initially. So it's nice to know about the pattern, but once you have the data observable set up, all you have to do is go back to your template. And here you can delete all this code with all these nested if statements and all these nested async pipes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete everything. And I'm going to replace this by one single subscription to the data observable at the top level of the component. And this means that anywhere in the template, in every single section of the template, you automatically get access to all the observable data. So here, for example, I want to loop through courses. I access them via data.courses. If I need lessons, I can also access them. And if I need the users, I can also access them as well. So as you can see, this is very clean, very maintainable. A single usage of at if with the async pipe gives you access to all the data that you need everywhere in the template and that is mistake number one and i was thinking of uh, adding multiple mistakes to this video but i can see that it's already going very long and i have a lot of a lot to say about this topic so i'm going to instead turn this into a series of videos i think that it will uh, i will be able to make more justice to every mistake and explain it properly instead of trying to rush the explanation just to pack a ton of mistakes in a single video so i'm going to stop the video here thank you so much for watching leave me a like here and uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to get notified when the next video on the mistakes list is coming out thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time cheers everyone